Welcome back. Two U.S. officials say the CIA director, Bill Burns, will soon travel to Europe to meet with Qatari, Egyptian and Israeli officials for talks on a potential agreement to free hostages in Gaza. The same officials say the U.S. believes it is now possible to secure the release of all the remaining hostages through a single diplomatic agreement in exchange for a prolonged cessation of hostilities. Uh, the news comes as the White House says President Biden spoke with the Qatari Emir today on efforts to secure the release of all hostages still in captivity. And while there are hostages still in captivity, you know families are still in distress. Families of the hostages are speaking out, uh, some meeting with lawmakers in the U.S. and advocating for the release of their captive family members. Uh, Carmel Gott, an occupational therapist from Tel Aviv, uh, was visiting her parents in Kibbutz Beri on October 7th when a Hamas terrorist attacked, killing her mother, Knerit. And Gott was taken captive, as well as her brother, Alon, and sister-in-law, Yarden, and niece, Geffen, who were also visiting. Alon and Geffen escaped. Yarden has since been released. Carmel is still being held captive. Gilly Roman, a relative of Carmel, uh, joins me now. First of all, as I said when I first met you, um, th th there aren't really words uh, to say I'm sorry for what you're going through, but obviously uh, it has been an, an, a nightmare for you just heard what we, we said, that, that the U.S. is working. Start by uh, telling us, because you're Israeli, but you're here in America, tell us why you're here and who you're meeting with. Uh, we are here for several months already. Uh, me and uh, my cousin, it's our second trip to the, to the U.S., and we are having a parallel trip right now to Germany with my little sister, Roni. Uh, we are here to make sure two things are happening. First of all, uh, that uh, humanitarian case of the hostages will not be neglected or forgotten. So thank you for having me. This is exactly why we, we are here, to make sure that you remember their faces, you remember their stories, you remember there, it's a very simple demand. Bring them back home now, unconditionally, immediately. Uh, this is something that we feel uh, have to be still on the headlines all over the Western world. Uh, the second thing is to convey our perspective uh, to talk about the importance of their release, the importance of the end of uh, Hamas terrorist regime in Gaza, um, and also to share our hope for, as you mentioned, the cessation of uh, hostilities uh, and for a better uh, future. That might take a lot of time, but we think that the opportunity, as um, you described, is uh, on our doorstep. And so you, you came here, you met with, you mentioned uh, Senator Elizabeth Warren, Ed Markey, uh, others. Senator you're, Sanders, yes. Senator Sanders, correct. You, you, you're specifically meeting with progressive leaders here in the U.S. Why? I think that um, for us it's uh, important, firstly, because we are from the liberal left. This is our global community. This is who uh, we feel or felt a sense of belonging to. Uh, for me, as a peace educator and an LGBTQ rights activist, uh, this is the people that I think that should support us the most. This is the people that we share our value with, and we want to explain to them and to have a conversation with them about why we expect these uh, things. And we also feel that uh, among the progressive uh, left or far left, uh, there isn't enough support, there isn't enough understanding, there are even dangerous messages that legitimize Hamas and their jihadistic ambitions. And we are here to say how unacceptable and unreasonable that is. Talk to me a bit about Carmel. Um, she's in her 30s, I understand. And this must have been so difficult for you as a family. She was, you thought she was going to be released in December. Um, and that didn't happen. And that, that's got to be just, you know, pain on top of pain. Um, but it must be heartwarming to understand that she's actually helping others. You, you, you've gotten some testimony about this from folks who uh, have come back, that you know, she's an occupational therapist and she's helping people get through whatever they are going through with yoga and meditation, right? True. You're capturing really well the mixed emotions that we have through all this uh, process. So obviously when Yerden was released, we were so thrilled. I cannot even explain the, the level of uh, acceleration. Uh, and we also got these reports about Carmel, two boys that were uh, with her in the same room, in the same house held by, uh, by Hamas, described to us a very hard captivity, a very violent captivity, but at the same time the resourcefulness of Carmel that as a 
caretaker mm -hmm. taught them yoga and meditation and make sure that their mental, is, mental health is being kept. Um, Yerden was released on the, 40, uh, the 54th day. Uh, we really hope that on the eighth or ninth uh, days of the deal, Carmel is one of the last remaining women uh, right. will be released. And that was excruciating. That was the first time that Yerden broke down, that I broke down after her release, seeing the hostilities um, getting back into action yeah. and understanding that we are not going to see Carmel for a long time. And just, and just finally, because, you know, when people talk about a ceasefire, it's different when you're you're sitting with a family member, someone who's still being held hostage in Gaza, and you have Hamas saying, "Well, the the IDF killed these hostages in this attack." I mean, do you do you think there can be any kind of ceasefire without the return of all the hostages? Because I know from your perspective that it must be so painful to see the fighting still in Gaza, knowing that Carmel is there. No, there, it's illegitimate to talk about a ceasefire that is only humanitarian to, for one side. It's going to uh, doom the, ho the um, hostages which are still there. Mm. A ceasefire should serve both. And I think that people are uh, trying to decide whether I should call for a ceasefire and the end of the terrorist regime of uh, Hamas, or should I call for a ceasefire and a better humanitarian uh, right. future to Palestinian. Basically, those are the, it's the same call. Those are integrated into each other. If we'll have all of them, that is the only path for a deal that we are talking about right now. So it have to include the release of hostages, the end of Hamas regime, and of course, a better humanitarian future and end of the hostilities. All of them as a package deal can bring us to a much better situation than the one that we are standing well, on whatever right happens now. politically, I hope that Carmel comes home to you soon. Absolutely. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.